All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is preheat our griddle on low. I'm doing all four burners on low. And then once it gets to about 300 or a little above, I'm gonna put the bacon down. So I've been experimenting with cooking bacon early and not wait until it gets to 375. I saw someone say that it will stop curling up. So it's all on low. We're about 300, and eh, not quite three. We're at like, we got here? 280, 280, 290 in the back, it looks like. So we'll go ahead and put the bacon down. I'll be trying to do the thermometer as much as possible during this, just so that you can see what everything ends up at. And we'll do the bacon first, and then we'll do the potatoes next. And yeah, I think it was Blackstone Betty that said that if you cook bacon while it's not quite all the way hot, it won't curl up on you. Not that I have a problem with curled up bacon, but you know, something to think about, something different to do. If I can get this bacon off here. Being stubborn. So I'm just doing a whole pack. This is regular bacon. This isn't thick cut bacon. I'm gonna put it on basically the whole griddle because I'm gonna use the grease to kind of help season. I might add some more oil later. We'll just kind of see how it goes. But for now, we're gonna start this griddle off the way you should always start breakfast off. And that is bacon, 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 baby. And then we'll throw the potatoes down. But what we really want to do is watch the temperature. So the goal of this video is to go over temps with you and see, I want to keep it around 375 while I cook the potatoes and the bacon. And then I'll cook the pancakes at 375 as well. And hopefully it stays at that temp. If, if it starts getting too hot, I'm going to cut burners off. And I'll probably start all the way on the right with the right burner because that's going to be my warming spot anyways. That's just kind of how I work out my griddle. You can do wherever, but you just need to keep watching it. And if it starts to get too hot, cut something off. I have this surface thermometer here that also helps me kind of keep an eye on the temperature. It's not as good as the infrared. It's not necessary. I just like it. It's just a me thing because I can see where if it gets too high or if I'm not using the infrared or I forget for a second. I can go ahead and um, I'll see with that because it has a little red spot on it where you see where everything goes. So I will give you a quick shot of that so you can see what it looks like. Oh boy. You can see hopefully there, see it's got the 350 to 400. And it's climbing because it's in the back. I just put it on there. So it takes forever to get to where it needs to be. But it'll keep climbing. And if I go see it go in that red there, 400 to 500, then I know because I haven't got my infrared for a while. I'm like, oh, shoot, I need to check this and turn it down. So that's what I like that for. So I'm put you guys back down here. Zoom out. Okay. Everybody's good to go. All right. So, we'll keep letting this bacon cook. I'll probably go ahead and speed the video up at this point and then come back when the it's time to put the potatoes down and we'll just cruise through this area of the video. Let's go ahead and take another temp just so we can see where we're at here. So 306 in the middle. something 230 right here that's on the bacon. You gotta be careful if it's if the infrared's hitting the bacon it's gonna take that temp and not the temp of the griddle. So see that's a 360 all the way on the left where the bacon isn't. On the right 286, 280, 214 up there in the corner, 265, 270, 300. I mean so maybe I won't Fast forward, so I mean, this, this is a good example of like, you don't know where your griddle's at. And even though all four of these are on low, right here is like smoking hot. What was that at? Not smoking hot, but it's clearly hotter than everywhere else. 
it's at 350. So I mean, it's it's rolling, and these ones in the middle are only at 250 or 280s where they are at. So I mean, you can see this bacon is getting shriveling up before this bacon. And so we're gonna flip this first, and we know where our hot zone is, and we're gonna start moving stuff around. Also, I gotta get these potatoes down. So, I mean, I might end up just putting my potatoes in this area because I know it's hot. I got my bacon grease down already. So then once I get that bacon able to flip and I can, they shrink down, I can move them all to the right. I'll probably just put my potatoes there, to be honest with you, and then start cooking those because those can cook right along with the bacon. So. Maybe we'll move stuff around and, and get our potatoes down as it's getting up to about 350, 375 here. And you know, all the bacon's gonna cook at a different temperature and at a different speed depending on where it's at. So that's why I have my warming rack in the corner here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the bacon that gets done on that first and then keep cooking the ones that aren't done. You know, it's just like in a skillet at home we can make room here. Bacon up there. Try to keep it even. Using the whole griddle today, so. That one might be able to be flipped, yep. See, these ones are a little thinner cut than the other ones, too, so. Flip some of them over. All right, so then let's see, we got our little spot there now. We're clocking in 375, 360, that's perfect. I got my potatoes, these are just frozen. O'Brien potatoes with peppers and onions. I'll put them right down on the bacon grease. I'm using frozen potatoes, bacon, eggs, and pancakes. This is a real, real plain breakfast. I'm trying to, you know, beginner griddler, first time. I want to make this as simple as possible. There's other videos where we can go on to more complicated stuff, but we want to make this as simple as possible. So you don't want to move your potatoes and stuff, and you don't want to constantly be touching everything. I just, so what, all I want to do right now is just try to get a little bit of bacon grease on all of the potatoes and then leave them alone. That's the goal. All the potatoes and leave them alone. They're not quite covered. I'll season them at the end. So you've got peppers, onions in there and they're already cubed frozen. Potatoes, I got them from Kroger. They work out fine. I mean, there's other potato options obviously, but these work out fine. Want to get them in a single layer. And then they recommend to cover it if you're doing them on a skillet, which we're basically kind of like a skillet. So I'm going to cover them with my dome here. Boom. So now they're supposed to go over about 10 minutes. So hopefully we can um, get those done in about 10 minutes. After about five minutes, we'll flip them around and take a look at them. See our bacon over here. Try to bring you in a little closer. A lot of these pieces are looking pretty good. Let's see where that's at. I got two of them there. Those ones are looking good, so we'll move them towards the front. These ones move towards the front. Same thing. These ones look like they're about done, so. The front of my griddle is cooler, so that's why I'm moving them there. I'm gonna flip over the rest of this bacon. And it's all gonna end up on my warming rack. And I'll probably cut off the heat where the warming rack is, to be honest with you. The left side of my griddle gets hotter than the right side for some reason. I don't know why, it just does. So, probably cut this all off. Bacon's looking good. Yep, See these ones here in the front, I mean, they are just, they are done. You know how they're not always all cut the same. These ones are a little thinner, so they're, they're good for my liking. So I'm gonna put these ones back here. 
Go ahead and move the other ones up and just kind of keep an eye on everything. Come on. Okay, so we got a lot of bacon grease and that's fine. It's gonna go into the potatoes over here and then we will uh, we'll scrape some of it off before we do the eggs and then I might add a little bit of oil. But this bacon is starting to get pretty done pretty fast. So just keep an eye on it. We're what, 10 minutes in? So we're looking at like 10 minutes for the bacon. Um, and, I didn't, and I put it on before the griddle even got up to temp. Speaking of that, this is a good time to see where the griddle's at. Let's see right up here in the front. 297, up in the middle, 375. So you can see it really wants, I mean, it, all of them on low, it's trying to get up to 400. 330 on the right, and that one's on. I don't know why, 350. Go back corner here, 306, 305. 380 all the way in the top. So the top's really where the hottest is. And we can check our surface thermometer. So I just noticed that, see it's in the red, it's above 400. So the top gets hot and that's okay. That's what we wanted to, uh, we have it on there for, just to keep an eye out, sorry. Lock the camera. So here's bacon, done, done. Done. Top ones are done. They're going along real fast. These ones are pretty much almost done. Now even over here it'll cook a little bit, but because even though it's on that warming rack, it's still going to keep cooking a little bit. Flip these pieces over. They look like they're done. Yeah, it's pretty much. Bacon's pretty much calling it a day. It's done right now. Let's go ahead here. Scoot over. See what our potatoes are looking like. So I'm probably going to spread these out into the middle. If you want to get the crust, you really don't want to flip them too much. You want to try to only flip them like once but they're squares and they roll over so they don't always flip perfectly. But you can see we're starting to get some color on them. Which is the goal. Uh, some of them are running away now. Go back to your home. We're gonna get a nice color on you. He's here. So it's got the back of this griddle above 400 now on that little surface thermometer. I really want to spread these potatoes thin. Then it'll make it. Some of them are still back on my thing. Okay. Now they're all on there. Our bacon, I'll just move you over all the way. Hopefully it's not too shaky, I apologize. I mean, this is done. This bacon's all done for me. So I am moving it all on the rack. It's all done. Okay. So we're 14 minutes in, it looks like. Let's take a check. Our temps here. 360, 350, 360 over here. 350. 309, that one where the potatoes were went down a lot, 350, 360, 360. So nothing's cooking over here and I'm gonna need a spot to do the eggs anyways. So we're gonna, oh, I apologize. Didn't have that thing locked. So we're gonna turn off the right burner. Okay, so the right burner is all the way off. Now, we got the other three on low. You can see where the temps were at. Our bacon's done. The right burner is all the way off. We're gonna go ahead and let these potatoes keep cooking. I'll probably actually move the potatoes over to the left a little bit to keep cooking. 
and then I will scrape it down and I'll start putting down our pancakes. We only have a couple pancakes, it's just for me and my wife. You can see the steam coming out because the potatoes are frozen. They say to cook the potatoes from frozen. Do what the bag says. They've tested it in their test kitchen, so don't defrost them. They'll get mushy. They're probably going to get a little mushy anyways because they're frozen potatoes. But like I said, we're keeping it simple. So we'll scrape it down, move the potatoes to the left, and do our pancakes. By that point afterwards, we should have room over here on the front right to do our eggs where it should be nice and cool. Move our potatoes a little bit. Like I said, I'm trying to keep them flat. I'm trying not to touch them too much. Get my handy dandy scraper. Now you can put oil down to do these pancakes or you can use the bacon grease or I'm probably just gonna go ahead and give them a try. There's still some little bit of bacon grease on here even though I'm scraping it off. So I'm just going to give them a try on that and see where where we end up at. So again before I do it I just want to double check my temp here where they're going down at. 350, 370, that's perfect. Now I bet that back is still really hot. 400, see how hot it is back in that back corner? 400, watch it go down, 360, 350, 360. Up in the front by the trough is usually the lowest, 326. So yeah, I mean, that's just my griddle. But if you put one in the back, it's gonna be burnt. I mean, I'll just put one in the back so you can see how much hotter it's gonna get. Got my little pancake gun. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna get yourself a little pancake dispenser gun like this. They are fun. I thought I was going to make six, but it don't look like six. It looks like I can barely get five out of here. That's all right. We don't need that many pancakes. Okay. Well, there is still some in there. All right, we're going to do a mini guy. Real mini pancake in the front corner. I don't want to waste any of this. Okay, so we'll take a look and see. These pancakes are going to be a real good indicator of the heat level of your griddle. I mean, it's going to tell you exactly where your hot and cool spots are. And you know, the general rule of thumb for pancakes, once they start bubbling around the edges, you can go ahead and try to start flipping them. Let's see here. Yeah, that back one's already done bring you over, see if you can get the pancakes. And my batter was a little thinner than I wanted this time, but this again is just a Kroger brand batter. I'm not that fancy. So the back one didn't get too bad, but I bet the front ones are still light. Looks a little light. Give it a second. Oh, that one looks perfect, actually. Yeah, it does. That one looks good, too. Okay. This one right by the trough, it looks real light. Nope, we're good now. We're only gonna go for a couple more minutes on this side. I'm probably just gonna lay them right over here with the bacon. And then, you know, at this point, I'm probably gonna cut this one off, too. So now I got the two here cut off, or on low, and these ones off. I'm really just trying to get this down ready to temp to do these scrambled eggs and still cook the potatoes. I don't always like to do one half of the griddle on and one off because of warping, but like I'm basically done right now. I just got to cook these eggs up, so I'm not super concerned about it. So we'll go ahead and I will stack, stacks on stacks on stacks. Living the high pancake life here. Oh yeah. One more. Okay. The other sides look better. 
those are the presentation size, the first one. So let's take a look at potatoes. Starting to get a little bit of color finally. We'll give them a flip here. Yeah. Like I said, I just try to flip them as minimal as possible. Spread them thin. They're still soft. I mean, they're they're gonna be kind of kind of uh, soft potatoes. That's just how these ones, fresh ones, hold up better. I'll get you that crunch, but I mean, we still got a good amount of color on there. Okay, now would be a good time. All I'm doing for the potatoes is season salt and pepper. Knock yourself out with some garlic powder, some paprika, smoked paprika, whatever you like to put in your potatoes is fine. I'm just, again, trying to keep this basically as simple as possible. Crack black pepper. When I worked at Bob Evans for three years, their potatoes, they basically just did seasoned salt and pepper. And a lot of oil and a lot of butter. So that's all it really was. So we'll keep it simple today. We're gonna go ahead and turn over here. See where we're at, right up front here where I turn those burners off. 350 still, 330 down, 320 here. What's it like in the back? 372, I mean, that is just hot, man. 360, you really want it to be at 325 or below for the eggs. So you're looking at, there you go, you're up good by the trough. And how about over here? 330, 359, and that is just smoking hot. So since these two are all the way off and I'm gonna want this area here, it will rotate around. Our, our warming rack, put it back here, scrape it down, potatoes are basically done, all we got left are the eggs, I mean there's a lot of bacon grease on here, I really don't think, maybe I'll just try it without the oil too, I mean there's just so much bacon grease over here I don't really think I need now, because of the bacon grease, the eggs might have a couple little specks in them, which is okay. If you really don't want that, use water and clean everything down. Um, what you really want too is, if this spatula has been used, you really want to want to clean that off if you're trying to get your eggs to not have anything in them. I mean, sometimes they have stuff in them, they're just diner eggs, they just get dirty. But if you're really trying to clean everything, keep them as pretty as possible, wipe that down. Okay. All right, let's go see here for the eggs. Right side of the griddle, 340, I mean that, 320. I really don't like cooking them below 325 and you're still sitting in the back. Wait, 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 372 is up here. 350, 370, I'm gonna cut this one off too. Then let the potatoes just sit. I mean, you can cook your eggs here. You know, we're looking at three, four, you're three something in the front. Once you get here, you're 350, and that is just a little bit warmer than I would like. We can do it. Um, I might just drop down a little bit of water to see if that'll cool it down real quick. And then, let's see. And this would actually kind of clean our spot here too for the eggs. But now I'm basically removing the bacon grease, so. Let's see where we're at here. 304. 290. 330. Okay, I think we're good now. I'm gonna have to put down some oil since I got rid of most of that bacon grease. I'll try to get the camera here set up. Whoa. A little close and a little dark. All right, 
There goes some oil for us. There's still some bacon grease back in the corner here. Actually, you know what? My griddle goes to the left here. There's bacon grease here. There we go. There we go. Let me make sure you can see me do that. A little bacon grease here. There we go. Now we got it. I can already see a speck of bacon in there. Okay. Now we got the bacon grease down. We saw that it went down to a more accurate temperature of between 3 and 325. We shall slow pour these eggs, our pancakes and stuff. Let's just flip those so the ones on the bottom aren't like cooking. Slow pour these eggs down here. You don't have to pour your eggs, probably can't see, sorry. You don't have to pour your eggs all at once. Do it low and slow. We'll do salt and pepper when I go inside. That's just how my wife and I do it. If you want to put it in right now, knock yourself out. If you want to do cheese, now's a good time to do cheese. But we're doing this one real simple. This will be your first breakfast on the griddle. Make it for your family. Everybody will love you. You'll be so happy you bought the griddle. because we're at that temperature I don't have to like panic on these eggs they're completely fine we're gonna cook slowly get done now at this point I just flip them a couple times let them sit and they'll finish up while I start plating everything and I don't need to panic because I got my griddle down in the right temperature there's a few black spots you know just keeping it real here there's some right there. Maybe there's still some bacon or it's just from the griddle. It's not always perfect. Use more water and wipe it down real well with a towel rather than a scraper if you're really trying to not get any black spots. So, let's plate this up. That's it, folks. Basic breakfast, pancakes, bacon, and eggs. Hopefully you found this helpful. I know it's kind of long, but um, some people were interested in seeing it. I hope they kept it entertaining and helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Keep on griddling.